Welcome to my talk, testing microservices end-to-end -end in isolation with API contracts. My name is Lewis Prescott. I'm currently QA lead at Seracare, which is a home care company here in the UK, one of the fastest growing companies at the moment. I'm also a course author on Test Automation University, and I have my own podcast talking about API contract testing and how to get started. What are we going to be talking about today? So what are the difference between mocks and API contracts and how can you convert one into the other? How to gain enough confidence when moving to continuous delivery it can be quite tricky in microservices. And how to use API contracts within your end-to-end -end tests to make them more stable and reliable. Let me set the scene and tell you a little story about how I started a role. So I come in and someone says, our end-to-end -end tests are all use mocks. So they're running the pipeline and they're really stable. And I'm like, that's great. But they're not fully end-to-end -end because they don't use the integrated services. So how can you have confidence when you deploy your software? Why is this becoming more of a trend? So if you look at the graph, then you can see that microservices is becoming more popular, the blue line, monoliths becoming less popular, and now they're starting to meet in the middle. That's because of distributing systems and scaling your applications. So traditionally what's happened is that we've used API tests to test our services and collate the data and then send the response. Whereas moving to microservices, we can now pinpoint those services that we want to test and test them in isolation. What the difference is when it comes to end-to-end -to -end tests, we can use a mocked approach, a hybrid approach, or we can use a fully integrated approach. So what are the challenges that come along with that? With integration, on the right-hand side, they're difficult to maintain, they're expensive, and we run them late in the process. Whereas the mock, they're not lifelike, they're not production-like, they're usually out of date because we don't tend to update our mocks as frequently as we would if it was an API service. And in my experience, what I've seen is we're using either mandatory fields to get that test to run, or we, we pick all of our data into that mock so that we, we cover all bases. That's not uh, what you would do in reality either. So this is where API contracts come in. They're consumer driven. So we're using a lifelike scenario because this is how it's going to be consumed by the web app or the mobile app, for example. We've, they're verified by the API provider. So we can have confidence to the service is operating as we expect. They're kept up to date because the contract tests live right next to the code and get updated whenever we make a change. They're version controlled, so we can put point to a specific version that's maybe on an environment like production. And now with bi-directional contract testing provided by Packflow, we can use our existing mocks. We don't have to create new API tests or create more code. We can just reuse the code that we already have. Things like Cypress and Mock Service Worker, we can now use their fixtures or their mocks that we've set up within those tools to provide us with those API contracts saves us a lot of time. So what's the end game of this? We're trying to deploy with confidence and how do we achieve that? We've got our functional tests down the left-hand side, we've got some of our non-functional tests and our smoke tests to check when we release our infrastructure. And then in order to achieve the full level of confidence, I believe we should be using contract tests to create that confident that we have deployed our services and we can then add those to our end-to-end -end tests as well to speed up our pipelines, to make it more stable and have more confidence. We've all been in those scenarios where our pipelines can take quite a while, they're quite flaky. How can we improve that with API contract tests? So what are the benefits that we're looking out for? We're testing earlier through not having a dedicated environment. We're increasing our confidence because we can now rely on those tests and not depend on any external services. The visualization of how the API actually behaves is a real boost. 
and all of our tests are isolated. They run on their own. The environments that we've spun up as part of the pipeline, and we can uh, then control what we have control over. Let's look at what it looks like in terms of the isolated tests. So we generate our API contract, either from our existing mocks or from Pact. We publish those to Pactflow, and that stores our contracts. We then can convert that contract into a stub, which we can then call with, from our focus tests. And then we run those tests, and everyone is happy because our tests are green. So let's have a look. So we're making a call to get the ingredients for our chocolate cake. And we do that by calling our local API service. But that local API service is being stubbed and that's being replaced by our API contract which is being stored within Packflow. So let's have a look at the code itself. So we can see that we're intercepting the command here and we're waiting for the cake before we show the ingredients. And we're doing that using side.task. So the task calls our Packflow server and replaces it with our stub. So our stub then gets sent to our intercept command using Axios to get the stub data. And then we're returning that to our test. And our test can run now end to end without relying on a local API service or one that's running in an environment. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening and hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to learn more, please follow me on Twitter at Weed Prescott or check out my website at pacman.co.uk. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.